We were just like, we're friends making a stupid song with the lyrics, bing, bang, boom. <laughs> like, I mean, Shakespeare who? You know what I mean? <laughs> just, uh, and mm-hmm. I'm trying to buy a house. Wow. I'm sure it's property. I just want to be her gay bur. Drag queens are like the roaches of the universe. You know, <laughs> like, no matter what you do, baby, we're going to be around. We're going to figure it out. Yeah. We're not going anywhere, ever. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special Pride conversation with a group of queens who honestly are more powerful than any branch of government around the world right now. For the first time ever, we have assembled the five queens who won RuPaul's Drag Race around the world across the last year for a summit on the future of drag. Please welcome season 12 icon Jada Essence Hall, All Stars 5 winner Shay Coulee, Canada's Drag Race's first champion, Priyanka, <laughs> Drag Race Holland oh, 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 oh. winner Envy Peru and Drag Race UK season two victor Lawrence Cheney. Or as I like to call this group, Priyanka and everyone she's bullied on Twitter into going on a date with her in the last year. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. I, look, I still never went on a date with her, but um, I, I would do it. I want to do it. No, no, no. You are a liar, a cheater, and a thief because we went on a date in Los Angeles okay. behind Shea Coulee's back, and you were there. You remember it. Yeah, but also you never paid for dinner. Paid. That's what you I You never paid for dinner. <laughs> it's not a date. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to start with this chaos, but I will take it. My name is Priyanka. I've only been doing drag for two years, but you wouldn't know that because I'm an icon. If you came to Priyanka's show, you would see good hair, a really shiny costume, a lot of dancing, and I'd probably end up making out with you. I think that sounds like a good time, doesn't it? First, I just want to make sure for safety purposes, is anyone's blood sugar low? Does anybody need a shot of sweet tooth or listen (laughs) for some energy? Are we all good? I'm always preparing a soda. Yes, there you go. You guys are all ready. (laughs) Now, Jada, why are you not doing this interview in a bathrobe and a wig and no makeup? You know, that's my favorite look of yours. Oh, um, well, (laughs) God. Um, you know, I wanted to be, you know, we've all wanted to be glam today. You know, this is the first time in a very long time we had the opportunity to get up in the gig. And so I even, I even spray perfume on stage. No, you did not. I wanted to feel the full fantasy. We can smell I, it. I can smell it, right? Mm. Oh, so what fragrance like, are you wearing, Jada? It's called $100,000. It's called Midnight Rose by <laughs> Treasure, Midnight Rose by Lancome. Yeah. <laughs> Lancome. Yeah, this is not a paid ad. I just want everybody by to Lancome. Know. Not a paid ad. Now, I just want to start by asking you guys some random questions about the last year because it has been such a wild one for drag. Um, Lawrence, I have to say so sorry about this next question because I don't think you could, this is not meant to be shady, but I don't think you can buy things with repeater badges. So I want to ask, what are the most ridiculous things and or the most <laughs> extravagant things you have all done with your prize money? Is there any like crazy purchases? Oh, that's a fun question. I really didn't mean that to be shady, Lawrence. I promise. I really Excuse didn't. Me, I can sell them on eBay and make a f***ing <laughs> mint. So do not <laughs> <Yes. that. laughs> Lawrence is like, I got mine. Lawrence yeah. already got all the money. And we don't know what they're doing behind the scenes over in the UK. Rue could just be like wiring in the money to Lawrence's account. We don't know. It's <laughs> true. Oh, sure. yeah. I'm trying to do like weird adult things. I mean, I did take a lot of my my money and I like made music with, with, with it. But I want to like use the money to create more content. Because this, this weird thing happens after Drag Race. Like you need to create your own Drag Race after. Like what's your big project? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I guess I'm going to take some of the coins mm-hmm. and I'm going to get in the studio and just be like, oh, well, yeah. You're going to tune it after? It was that bad? Okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and just, and, and like, you know, make content. But I'm also trying to be like a real adult mm-hmm. and I'm trying to buy a house. Wow. I'm sure it's property. I just want to be her gay bur. Well, like I didn't like I didn't buy a house yet, um, but it, and it wasn't after the after the hundred thousand dollars after money. But when I won one of the weeks and I got the check immediately, I had to go buy furniture, which you all saw me dancing on in the finale because I was like, I'm not going to see what my house looked like before. So that was <laughs> this competition is all about making sure that you can persevere throughout anything and any challenge. And I've done that. I've worked my ass off, and I'm not going to slow down now. The Milwaukee, the bring essence of my, beauty. Bring Jada Essence Hall. Bring back my girls. What are some of the craziest or the most unexpected celebrities that you guys have gotten DMs from since winning? Shea Coulee. 
<laughs> did anybody hear from like their Snatch Game celebrities or anything? Yes, I that. did. Yes. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I need to hear this. Envy, tell us. Yeah, so I did uh, Patty Brard. You guys don't know her, but she is very <laughs> famous here in Holland. And she's been on the on a, on a girl group. She, she, they had like uh, hits like worldwide in the 60s, 70s. Yeah. But she's a very hysterical character. And till this time, she has like a, her own toilet paper in leopard print. And she has their own <laughs> bottles of non-alcoholic uh, alcohol, well, uh, drinks. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that non But everything alcohol. a leopard print. Yeah, well. <laughs> if you sell that at the bar, that'll keep me from drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she's she, she's really nice, and she always sent me a lot of uh, nice gifts, and I really like her. Oh, like yes. Lawrence, your face lit up there too. Did you hear from your Snatch Game celebrity? Well, well, yeah. I mean, when you mention Snatch Game around me, I start tingling, and then it, you know it's like trauma flashbacks. But um, I <laughs> actually me, heard from Miriam Margulies, who is who I portrayed, and do you know what was really sweet? She just emailed me and she said, hi, Lawrence, um, I, I heard you've done me on Drag Race. I don't watch the show and whether it was good or bad, thanks for doing me. And I was like, that's all I can ask for. That's yeah, the that's bottom line, right, all I can ask for. You know, if we can take anything away from the past year in drag, it is mm-hmm. to not lie or to mount the campaign against Shea Coulee in any way possible. Um, Absolutely not. But outside that, how has this last year for Drag Race and its global expansion sort of expanded the idea of what drag can do or how this culture can reach people to affect change? I think that the pandemic pandemic really helped us to understand how drag can cross so many different borders Mm -hmm. and boundaries and bring us all together. There was a moment when all the gigs were getting canceled and everything was shutting down, that there was this set of like panic and worry. But then I was just all like, we as drag queens and as artists really create under some of the most unusual circumstances. And I remember getting excited to see what people would do. And it was a matter of weeks before girls were turning out virtual shows and we were in people's living rooms and connecting. And I feel like this year has shown just how far we can really take drag, that there really is no stopping. I I feel like, like when you say that, I feel like drag is like, we drag queens are like the roaches of the universe. You know, (laughs) no matter what you do, baby, we're going to be around. We're going to figure it out. (laughs) Not going anywhere ever. (laughs) I'm giving you catch of the day. I'm giving you nautical, full Bollywood fish fantasy. Unlimited crab at your favorite local restaurant. Free, I mean, you did say in our winter interview that you loved also that the show is normalizing people of color winning things in Mm -hmm. the last year, especially. So how do all of you think at a young age, seeing this collective group win on a very queer show like this would have impacted your trajectory in life if this happened say in like 2010 instead of 2020 and, and 2021 I think that's also well, like cool. Jada shut the f*** up okay. <laughs> <laughs> stand up <laughs> you can tell Jade and I have spent too much time together Jada go ahead what was the question <laughs> <laughs> So Look over um, there. How do you <laughs> think? Oh, oh, people have called. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah. It, so how? I, well, it did happen of, in 2010. Uh, I was watching Drag Race, so I wouldn't have. Would, I definitely would not have been a little young boy watching Drag Race. I was a grown ass person getting sloshed in the club. But um, even then, watching Drag Race, I feel like watching people like myself win and do well on Drag Race, it just makes you feel like anything is possible. I know you watch a lot of shows where you see a lot of people who are not like yourself win. And you and I always used to feel like I would want to go on a reality TV show and compete or do the show, but I never really felt like I could go on the show and win. And um, even though in the, in, the, in the past, I mean, there's only been like one franchise of the season before, like just American Drag Race, but but like seeing this year, seeing how all of this happened this year, it would have been like even more empowering for me to be like, wow, if they can do it, I really, I really honestly can achieve that. Like for real. I just think like there's just such a, I mean, I said it in my winter interview, it's just like the n- normalizing seeing people like us when like a lot of people come up to me and they're always like, it's not only that you won, like 
because you're a POC. It's just cool mm-hmm. to see that like as a person of color, you can just like walk into a room and just be like, I'm going to go be that thing and mm-hmm. go do that thing. And also I have to say this really fast because I make sure that I make this a mention to say because a lot of people try to discredit the hard work of people of color winning this year by saying, mm-hmm. oh, it's like the statement. It was incredible, not just for myself, but even watching my other counterparts who participated in Drag Race this year and won. It was not just like, wow, a person of color won and I can win. It was, wow, people of color can slay the game and do incredible things and win deservingly. Shay, go ahead. I know you wanted to speak. Uh, I was just going to reiterate that and saying that fundamentally, I think what is important and what perseveres is hope. Mm -hmm. Um, Because at the end of the day, without hope, you know, what do we have? And Mm -hmm. I think seeing people of color succeed just provides that to so many people. And the thing about these seasons is they were filmed before the political unrest that happened. So you saw this amazing performance that was done before this went down. Yeah. It wasn't even like a pivot that needed to be made. You actually just saw people who were shining in their element. Just being able to see people succeed just gives people so much hope. And I and I feel like that goes beyond just the viewers of color. I feel like for everyone, just seeing someone who's really been through something succeed and believe in themselves mm-hmm. and chase their dreams just gives people hope. And that's powerful. Look at the edges I snatched today. I see you watching how I snatched. Shay and the other girls best get out of my way Cause I wanted to get it and came up in here and did it And girl, I'm ready to show them how these bitches are on them Got that supermodel switch Miss Kool-Aid, she a real, real bad bitch uh. it, it was really great seeing all of the things that you were able to do in the past year I mean, Jada and Shay, I just I was so impressed when you guys walked for Rihanna in the Savage Fenty show and Shay, Oh my like, god So good, it was so good and, and Shay, you of course went viral for your interpretation of the Vogue challenge last year And it's funny because I think fashion is an interesting area because we see fashion accepting drag in some ways, but it's like slow to evolve in others because Mm -hmm. outside of like Rue on Vanity Fair and Envy on Cosmo in the last year, we haven't seen a drag queen on the cover of a major magazine like like Vogue. Um, so Envy, I want to ask you first, why why do you think fashion is willing to sort of accept drag in some ways, but slower to accept in others? And then Jada and Shay, I want you guys to answer as well. Okay, perfect. Well, they don't have a choice now. You know, we live in a new world. <laughs> no, a drag is everywhere. People see how popular drag is and we have some beautiful and amazing talent, a beautiful girl. So I think it's time to, uh, to have more diversity diversity into fashion, into beauty, because there's more than the skinny model. There's way more than that. And I'm very happy to see that slowly everything is changing and they're putting drag queens on covers for magazines, for example. How Can you imagine that like 10 years ago would have happened? And I think it's going to evolve to something more. You can see Bimini now um, going uh, to all yeah. the modeling gigs, you know, and Miss Fame. I think it's it's time. It's time I, to... Uh, and, and I mean, look at Shay. It's literally like a Valentino model. Like, uh, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. But I think like fashion, which I think now is kind of a little weird because people think that drag is only fashion now. But I think that they think that now yeah. because fashion is so accepting of drag because fast drag and fashion have always worked hand in hand. And you should be accepting of someone that you pull inspiration from. I honestly, I mean, drag queens turn looks and like set trends and then designers see that and okay. they then are inspired to create beautiful collections. I mean, as much as we are inspired by them, they are inspired by us. And so I feel like yeah. it, it only makes sense that we like work together. Exactly. Absolutely. I agree. It's it's nice to see. I feel like um, the fashion industry in so many ways is breaking down a lot of barriers right mm-hmm. now because, look, at the end of the day, we all wear clothes and we all want to see ourselves represented in the clothes that are being sold to us. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're finally like just like shedding the uh, concept of like this ideal, this like hard to reach ideal and just being like, oh, my goodness, people will actually 
actually respond to us when they see themselves reflected mm -hmm. yes. in this industry. So yeah. it's nice to see um, these changes happen. Well, one one area where I think we have seen consistent strides made is in music. I mean, the United King Dolls, I mean, going to number 27 in the UK, yes. that was just wild. You guys were on the radio. I mean, Lawrence, what did that song's success mean to you in the moment? Because the season wasn't even over and you were already in the top 40 in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Already a chart top and hit. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, it meant so much to all of us, but it meant so much to me because I literally, when we were doing that challenge, I was like, I don't sing, I don't dance. But then I was like, oh no, that's where I was at in the root, you know, with the rusical. And that kind of steered me off down a dark path of like, well, you just worried too much about being bad that you were bad. You, you know, mm -hmm. if you believed in that, you would be able to kind of go, let's fake it, you know, for the cameras. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what it was. So we we stopped kind of worrying about, you know, um, impressing the judges. We were just like, we're friends making a stupid song with the lyrics, bing, bang, boom. <laughs> like, I mean, Shakespeare who? You know, like, <laughs> it's just uh, the, the wildest thing. And it means so much to me. I mean, now, you know, Madonna's on the phone. You know, it's... <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> but well, uh, it, it's really, really epic. Well, are you um, and the United King Dolls planning to do more music for an album? Like, because the Frock Destroyers put out an album. So are you guys planning to do more? Tune in to find out. That's what I was going to say. Well, you know... Uh, You'll need to wait and see. I want us to do Eurovision. I re yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I really want vodka. us to do Eurovision or something like that. I think that would be really camp. But yeah, definitely. We want to write more music. I want to talk, sing some more. We can do that. You know, <laughs> Why yeah. not? Who cares? <laughs> I am the Susan Boyle of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Because I dreamed a dream. I don't know the other lyrics. Well, does anybody else have any music projects coming out? Because I know that that's like, that's a thing that, that everybody, oh, Priyanka's face I is I love out. music. It's so <laughs> much fun. And I have to say something is that people don't take drag music seriously, but we're heading into a whole new era where we're about to be on the chart and we're about to, you know, do features with mainstream artists i know that there's something brewing i'm so i'm i'm releasing an album in may i guess is this may what, what month is it right now in this interview it, it's, it's 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 may it's may oh, may. oh yeah, my god the album's out congratulations didn't hear it yet but it's great i heard and i think an, like a lot of like shay has has music already like great music and, and there's like adore has music and, and 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 aja has music and all these people have music now and it's all great but i think now it's time to get that music on the radio and in commercials and on tv shows and in movies because we're creators too and like envy said like drag is happening and they have no choice mm -hmm. so do exactly. it i've really been writing a lot and have had the opportunity which i'm really excited about to uh sit down with an a and r exec from a major record label Wow. And we have been like working like really closely together in hopes to not just getting me signed to this label, but also I have my own record label, House Down Records, in which we would like kind of like merge and they would actually help me grow my own record label. Uh, yeah. So I'll grow me some representation fierce. in the near future. Okay, and, if you, if, <laughs> and if you ever need grow, I play a mean triangle, so keep me. <laughs> 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 playing the bing bang bong honey. Love it. Bang bong. <laughs> no, I think also I, I think season 13 and UK2 especially recently have expanded also the notion of what a drag queen on mainstream TV can be I mean Gottmik uh, non-binary folks like Ginny and Bimini I mean it, we've just seen a lot recently um, that, that pushing in a nice direction so where would you guys like to see that go in the future and, and is that significant I mean, I mean oh go ahead go ahead well it's, I'm just like that's how it's always been for all of us working in the bars before didn't mm -hmm. you know everyone had their their pronouns and there was some trans people and 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 it, we, we we're used to that like we're so and I maybe I'm speaking for everybody but I feel like it's more shocking to me that everyone's like oh this is the new form of drag we're like no it's been around it's yeah it's like, it's like this is nothing like, new baby and we're, and we're even more, more we're even more shocked that like 
only a person who whose pronouns are he and him are the ones that can do drag, but everybody else can't. We're like, huh? What? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is, and I, this and is I mean, I think I would love to see like further like inclusivity. Like I'm definitely waiting to see a trans woman on Drag Race oh my because, yeah, um, like it has been something that's like super important to me because like when I think about like my drag career, I literally would not be anywhere if it was not for like trans women who mentored me and yes. like made me believe that drag is something that I could do and be successful at. Mm-hmm. Taught yeah. you how to be beautiful. It was the trans Absolutely. that taught me how to be beautiful, yeah. girl. Trans okay. people always... It was, trans- not, it was not the drag queens that were teaching <laughs> me how to be beautiful. <laughs> <so>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it trans was the trans people were like, baby, come over here. Let me tell you something real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they're just throwing blush on your face. Like, just soften it. Just really soften, soften it. it. Okay. <laughs> it's interesting too because All Star Six is is moving to Paramount Plus from VH1 because it appears this is a real commercial entity. I mean, Drag Race and its fandom are so loyal um, that they're driving subscriptions to this new service. What does that say to you guys about the commercial strength of something like Drag Race and drag in general? I mean, that a major streaming service is willing to bank its fan base to to drive those numbers. Is that something that was even fathomable to you like 10 years ago? I don't think it was. I don't think it was fathomable in a way. I thought I could see it coming because Drag Race was becoming more and more. To me, it was always a, a force. And I all when I first started to see drag, I just I would go to the shows and I would see drag and I just immediately thought like this is the most entertaining thing that I have ever seen in my life. And like even people in my family, like my father, my brothers, when they come in, they see drag. They're excited about it. Like I don't. I don't know why it's taken so long, but like art is art. And if you're entertained, then you're entertained. And so like, I think whatever, for whatever reason, people are finally now coming around to it. Um, it's a great thing, but um, I'm glad that people are just realizing that like our art is actually art and entertainment and it's worth being seen. And yeah. I mean, it took a while for that to happen, but I mean, sometimes it takes a while, but it w- but we're worth it. L'Oreal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jada Essence Hall. Calgon, take me away. She's the best bomb. <laughs> bitch, I'm really excited because my look turned out amazing. And it's giving me this rich bitch fantasy dipped in a beautiful, sudsy, foamy bubble bath. And I just feel the fantasy sweeping over me. Is there, is there anything that you think that has changed about the industry within the past year? Because we really have seen it like sort of skyrocket as Drag Race is, is expanding around the world. Is there anything that you've noticed as a result of that? that has impacted the industry itself. There's like a couple of ways of looking at it. Like a lot of like big brands, like yeah. a lot of my like my reign and people being like, oh, Priyanka really like won that show and she made it was like all of the brand deals I got. I was like the face yeah. of Soda Stream, and then I was the face of Bank of Montreal and then I was the face of this. And I'm gonna, I'm about to be the face of an alcohol brand. It's like them seeing that be like, that's like the seal of approval of the mainstream. They're like, oh, yeah. she, mm-hmm. she made it. And then in terms of just like drag culture in general, there are like so many more talent agencies. Like all these big brands are also reaching out to local girls to like team up with them and get, you know, all uh, get, get their face uh, on their websites or whatever. So I think there, there's just more of, of a collaboration and an openness. It does suck though. It doesn't, okay, hold on. It doesn't suck. It's really great because everyone's getting opportunities, but, 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 but I've had to have some really hard conversations with some people to be like, so in June, we're going to have you be the face and I was like well why June like oh because it's pride month and I was like well I'm gay all year round mm-hmm, and yeah. then they're kind of just like that is honestly what's well, been lingering in my head the whole time you know we it do makes have these me... opportunities but a lot of times they really want to start coming around like specifically around this time of year to be like yeah. hey what's up we got this budget for pride we would love to <laughs> see you and you're like that's great but I also have bills the other 11 months of the year <laughs> And as much as I would love to stretch myself thin on 10 different pride projects, how about, you know, you just come at me as like an artist and understand that I'm not something to be tokenized like one month out of the year. I just think as artists, like uh, to backpack what Shay was saying, it, it's just important for us to walk into those rooms and be the leaders mm-hmm. and to say like, you know, like, thank you so much for this opportunity. Like, it's really great that you're working with a queer person um, to, to, to do this, but put your money where your mouth is. And, mm-hmm. and like hire me for a fall campaign. Yeah. yeah. Let me do your Christmas you, launch. And you know Let what? Let me the, do that stuff because mm-hmm. we have to say it. We just can't, we can't expect them to mm-hmm. tell us like just the same way that like we've had to educate so many people this last year about so many issues. It's up to us, the leaders with the crowns 
to yeah. educate the people who are hi- who are hiring us. I think I think you see a lot of brands who reach out to other people, but I'm like, if you look at our social media following and a lot of things, like people follow what we do and what we say, and I think like. I mean, you, it's great to sell a couple of pieces of candy or whatever, or a drink during Pride Month, but like pieces we of move pieces products of all year. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like if we if we find a product we love and we share that with our with our audience, it doesn't matter if it's summer or fall or winter. They love what we what they because they trust us. Hopefully we are being honest all the time. <laughs> <But> they <trust laughs> us and because they trust us, no matter when in the year it is, we should be able to like be able to do these campaigns. I know I've been lucky enough to work with brands who like it started initially as a pride thing. And then they were like, well, we love what you do and we love the content. And now we want you to do Christmas and we want you to do Hanukkah. Or maybe. Well, I don't do Hanukkah, oh. but you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, if it's a check, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Miss Hanukkah 2021. Yeah. When, when that happens, when that happens, then you, we can really see that, okay, something is really changing now. Mm-hmm. Because also here in Holland, they, it's always the Pride Month or sometimes at Christmas, but mostly the Pride Month. So now I'm working a lot. But yeah, who I don't know if they're going to work in September. I'm going to mm-hmm. have the same kind of gigs, you know? Right. So I think if that changes, that will be amazing mm-hmm. for everybody. Yeah. Uh, a major thing for me was uh, it was just before going away to film Drag Race, my season of Drag Race. I was uh, put on posters as a, a kind of a poster girl for our local subway in Glasgow. So like, oh, I, 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 I had that. been like, not not the foot long one, the one with the trains, not the yeah, like the you, you want to ride me, yeah, you want to ride the chain <laughs> express, do you want to ride? What was so interesting about that was two months before I got chased home, and I put this big thing up about you, you know, you can't like you know, we're here, we're queer, you need to get used to it, seriously. But uh, what I found really weird was... Wait, wait, wait. Who chased you? Was it Was it Jada? Is she bothering you again? Yeah. <laughs> Send him. Not with these flat feet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what was amazing was that campaign, you know, the people that worked there saw that and they were like, no, let's, let's fix this. This is wrong. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they were like, let's put you on a poster and say... We want to make this a safe space. So they, they spoke to me and they were like, how do you make it a, a safer space? And I said, well, it's just about like monitoring things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, not leaving these stations empty at night for, you know, with, with people, you know, where people can just do anything, you know. So yeah. uh, that was pretty cool. And yeah. that would have never happened five or six years ago, no. let alone 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want to know if what you guys would say to whoever ends up winning season 13 or all star six, like, what would you say to them about navigating that time after winning is, and I want to hear from each of you, if you have any sort of oh. bits of advice for those Queens, my <laughs> advice to the future winners of any drag race franchise, I have a couple of things to tell you. One, no one was robbed. You are the deserved winner of that season, you will be told you're robbed every single day for the rest of your life. Jimbo was robbed. People still text me it all the time, but know that you're the deserved winner. Also, in your reign, use that year or however long it is to just explode. Say yes to everything. Make sure you get your coins, work on projects, release the projects, because it's like all eyes on you. And that will create longevity for your career for when the next queen is crowned. It doesn't matter who the next queen is because you've already created a lane for yourself. That's beautiful. Yeah. I, I, you know, the thing is, I think is that I just would say, enjoy your reign as authentically as you can. For every single person that does Drag Race, the year is going to be something completely different. And you really can't control um, the way in which like, I mean, you can do everything in your power, but sometimes you can't control in which if brands will reach out for you. You can't control if fans will go crazy for you. You can't, con- there's a lot of variables that you cannot contain control and change but what you can do is just be yourself as much as you can as often as you can and just do do what makes you happy really honestly envy why don't you go next well i think it's very important as well to have like very good people around you that can help you with your taxes your finances uh oh. an agency you know um because yeah, we are creative people and we are already busy like creating the looks you know if we also need to do our t- you know our t- <laughs> okay. t- or uh, replying to every email that we have that is hard and it, it gets so stressful so find yourself somebody you can trust and is willing to work very hard for you because mm-hmm. if you both 
sh- work very hard, then everything will get uh, good for your career. Beautiful. That's Beautiful. great advice. Yeah, I want Shay's team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will Shay the whole team that she had. Every, the Even the dog. Give us the dog. <laughs> from the, from the, from the <laughs> Lawrence, let's go to you next. Well, you know, being that I've reigned for three long weeks, um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, do you know something I have learned? And I didn't think I'd learn it this uh, quickly. But a lot of people, because the spotlight is on you, people are often looking for quick fixes and they're looking for uh, more Instagram pictures or you to be on your phone answering messages and the emails and all these things. When actually, you know, I'm focusing on writing more than I've ever before. I never even knew I could write. <laughs> like, so I, I am focusing on the long term uh, kind of angle of it. I'm not worried about taking pictures. Taking pictures is fabulous and uh, posting them and, and, and stuff. But if I'm at a TV studio or if I'm, uh, you know, filming this, I don't need to post a picture and go with my ghettos, you know, and post a picture. You know, this will exist, but it will come out in May. And, you know, so it's getting used to, getting used to that kind of delay in what we do of the Mm -hmm. production of it. It takes a bit longer, but also not feeling the pressure of everyone else saying, well, you didn't post a picture last week. So you know what? You're dead to me. Do you know, it's, it's very that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lawrence, I mean, you've only been reigning for three weeks, but Rosé already played you on Snatch Game. So you are like... Yeah. I, mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you're making such an impact. What did you think of that? I have to ask you. <laughs> oh my God. I loved it. Do you know what was really funny? All I could think was, I was like... RuPaul will have not had a clue who Mary Queen of Scots is and then turned up and gone. <laughs> you know, like, it was so weird. The only thing with Rosé as me, I think she didn't get the hair right. You know, the hair's a wee bit different out of drag. Yep. Wee yeah. bit <laughs> but everything else spot on. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right, Shay, let's let's close with, with your advice that you would give. As someone who has experienced... Um, like both sides, um, I will say that they're not that much different as far as like the feeling, because like you came into this because you love the art of drag. And I would just encourage you to hold on to that for Mm -hmm. forever, because no one is going to love your drag or do your drag the way that you do it. And you have been chosen. This is your moment to have fun, to explore. So don't forget to be kind to yourself and to enjoy this because like you've you've done the hard work and now is your yeah. moment to enjoy being the winner that you are, baby. And yeah. Um, yeah. I know all of us here could say that we are absolutely proud of you and continue to slay. <laughs> beautiful. Jeez, all right. That's beautiful. A coming voice. I love that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you. you need to like voice over like planet Earth, like like yes. ASMR. Yes. You know what? Yes, we had we were talking about future drag opportunities. So let's manifest yes. me narrating some nature documentary. Yeah. I would love yes. that. I would, love that. would be <laughs> really good at it. Like all right, guys. Voice. Wow. Thank you so much. I can't thank you all. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Before we go, Joey, last question. Out of all of us, who is your favorite winner? You can't put me on the spot like that. I don't know. My mind goes blank. Am I? I feel like you're going to murder me unless I say you. So I'm just to save save my own life. I'll say Priyanka just because I don't know why. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. We'll see what Twitter has to say about this. I've you know, been robbed. I <laughs> <You> love all <laughs> of you. Yeah, I've been robbed. <laughs> I've been robbed. <laughs> I, I love all of you genuinely. I could not possibly answer that question. And I appreciate all of your time so much today. Thank you so much for what you do for the community and for what you've done on these shows. It's just been incredible to watch. And thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Thanks Joey. Thank you, Joey. Thank we you. love you. Thank you, Joey. Uh, love you guys. Bye.